All right. Hello, everybody. It's Jillian. So I want to clarify and make sure it's understood about the whole Jilly Juice girl and Jilly Juice boy and Jilly Juice animal. The, the standard of beauty changes every generation. It changes, I would say, every century. Um, and what I have found with the Jilly Juice is the standard of beauty is symmetry and proportion. So standard of beauty, I gotta understand, standard of beauty is uh, symmetry, symmetry, proportion, symmetry, proportion, and balance. Okay, so we can call everybody beautiful. Yeah, that everyone's beautiful. They're beautiful in their own way and everyone has different standards of beauty. But a Jilly Juice girl is someone who is proportional, they are symmetrical, and they're balanced, and they are indefinitely youthful. Indefinitely youthful. Because youth you can buy youth for a certain amount of time until Mother Nature says, okay, you can only fool your, your brethren for so long. So plastic surgery and, and nips and tucks and Botox will only take you so far. Eventually, Mother Nature is going to divulge your secret and say, hey, they're lying to you. There's only so much plastic surgery you can do to a body. So what Jilly Juice does is brings you back to proportion. It releases the excess to where you don't have imbalances in your microbiome and no imbalances in your biochemistry. What's your biochemistry? Fatty acid, amino acid, prohormones, and minerals. And then that all translates when you have imbalances in your biochemistry and in your microbiome. That is cancer disease, chronic illness, strokes, heart attacks, all of the diagnosable diseases, and falling victim to the COVID-19 virus. Okay? So... It hit me when I was looking at the pictures of Pip, beautiful girl. Pictures of Bridget, beautiful girl. Pictures of Krista. And mind you, I mean, Pip is about my age, maybe five years younger than me. Uh, Bridget is about 10 years older than me. Um, Krista is younger than me, but she also has her before and after. So you can see where she came from. You can see where she is right now. Um, and then there's John Oaks, who I think is probably a little bit older than me, but he, you know, he's not there yet, but... He's like the Jilly Juice boy that one day will get his hair. We're, we're, we're shooting for that. That's what he's shooting for. Okay, so there is a standard of acceptable acceptance or acceptable beauty in the Jilly Juice world, and that has to do with youth and vitality. Because when you start aging, degrading, and you start seeing major imbalances, then you start seeing asymmetr asymmetrical um, predispositions. You start seeing things off balance. Okay. And so, am I there yet? I don't say I'm 100% there yet. But what is really, I mean, what is, like, what, what is our ultimate future? What are we shooting for? Well, we're shooting for youth and vitality. Are we shooting to look like, you know, we're, we're, we're 6'10 and 120 pounds? No, we're not trying to be so skinny and so, like, you know, fat-free that you look like a bag of bones. You could be, you know, my eight or my height, five foot, one and a half, and be maybe 120 pounds, have enough fat on your body to be able to adapt to the changing conditions. You have enough uh, skin and collagen to look youthful. Um, you aren't blind, you aren't deaf, you aren't dumb, you aren't foggy. I mean, there are specific standards of balance, of symmetry, proportion, balance, and indefinitely youthful that will cater to the Jilly Juice world. So the people that I put on my on my Facebook as pictures, now they might change a little bit in the future because they're going through a healing process. I mean, I know Vicky, she's going through her own healing process and the pictures might change and vary a little bit if they want to ever put any new pictures up if they want to. Um, and will you when you see them in person and there's a picture of them the way they are today, will they kind of look the same? They won't look exactly the same. But what I'm shooting for is to not age. And that's what I, that's what the whole Jilly Juice world is about, is not aging. Because what is aging? It's degradation. It's cell degradation. Cell oxidation, I guess, 
It is um, imbalances in your microbiome and your biochemistry. And then it translates into cancer, disease, and chronic illness, strokes, heart attacks, bronchitis, all of that. Okay? And so the specific measurable results. So there's a lot of people out there that are on the jelly juice, but they are way behind the eight ball. They got many years ahead of them. Not saying they aren't a jelly juice girl, but what I'm looking for is where they can bring themselves a picture of themselves today looking like they did before they got diagnosed with whatever disease or cancer or whatever issue they had prior to where if they never ever were ever healthy then they're going to look totally completely different but not so different that people won't recognize them and be like oh my god you are a beautiful more healthier version of yourself that's really what the jelly juice girl is is a healthier beautiful more proportional version of themselves like i've seen it's interesting i've seen pictures of people when they were young like when they were like 12, 11, 10, and they looked so cute. They were like such the cutest kid. And then you, as you see them grow up, their faces started changing. It started becoming disproportional, asymmetrical. Things were changing because of the fact of predispositions and uh, surgeries and prescription drugs and all of that. Not even saying vaccines, because you're always going to be exposed to viruses and you're always going to be exposed to elements and the microbiome out there. But it's how your body responds to the environment and how it's able to adapt and come back. You know, so whenever you get exposed to a virus, you're not supposed to have an indefinite issue after you've been exposed to a virus. Your body should be able to bounce back from the exposure to any virus in the environment. But the fact that we have such weaknesses in the bodies that people get exposed to these viruses, whether it's in a vaccine or out there in, the, in, you know, in their community, and they don't bounce back. They don't adapt to that environment. They do adapt, but they adapt with predispositions. And so the whole point of the Jilly Juice world is to be able to adapt to your environment without taking on predispositions to where they compound each other until there's nothing left, until you are basically dead in the ground, dying from your predispositions. So the whole point of the Jilly Juice world is to be able to look young, vital, youthful, um, have a symmetrical proportion to yourself, despite the environment, that you can be exposed to a communicable person, you could be eating whatever food, and it's not gonna work against you. It's actually gonna work for you. See, that's the whole point of the Jilly Juice world is where you can take on the environment and it works to your benefit. It doesn't work against you. Unless someone puts you in a gas chamber and they don't give you any air or water, then yeah, it's going to work against you because you can't handle that kind of intense exposure to some, you know, uh, condensed element. You got to have a mixture of air and water. And if you don't, then, oh my God, yeah, you're going to succumb. But the whole point of the Jilly world is to know how to bring in the chemistry and the biochemistry that you can are able to adapt to and bounce back from and look totally proportional. And you might lose 50, 100 pounds you might gain 50 or 100 pounds. It's relative to where you are on the spectrum of, of balance and imbalance. I can't tell you what proportion is, but I'm sure you can figure out what predispositions you hold. I mean, you know your body mass index. You know your sugar levels. You know all of your hormonal levels. I'm sure you've gotten tests done to know where you stand, where the baseline is, or how far away from the baseline you are and where you need to be. So it's not for me to say what, you know, what should be for you and you, you guys know precisely where you need to be. Now the question is, are you willing to do the work? That's the question. So the people that I put as a Jilly Juice girl and boy and animal has gotten through the work. They've done the work or they are contributing to such an extent to where they are making a difference. Even if they haven't grown their hair. Like I know John Oaks hasn't grown his hair. Okay. He may not look exactly different from where he was when he first started the Jilly Juice protocol. So he did take a hiatus in between. But he is making a difference in his world by just the, the mere information that he is putting out there, making a different difference for somebody else. I already seen somebody else that, that was like attracted to his information, like Lilia Halver, that's her name. She liked your information. She's on my Facebook. She's taking it on. And, you know, she's your friend. I mean, maybe Richard John one day, maybe he'll turn around. Who knows? But, you know, so John has definitely made a difference. He's contributed to such an extent that he's already changing his community, his world. Okay, Bridget, she's on Dr. Phil with me, and she is looking amazing, and she put herself out there. Um, Krista did her before and afters, as well as testimonies. I mean, Pip, she's, you know, done her testimonies and, and um, is really just heavily into this and 
completely contributing to the group. So, you know, there are people that catch my eye and, um, and Vicky, yes, you too. Yes, bald guys do rock. Yes, of course. But, um, but, and some of you are doing the JJ's totally fearless, totally, you know, um, contributing, but you're just not there yet as a specific measurable result. Because there's one thing to say, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, blah, 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 right? And there's another thing to where do you actually look proportional? Do you look youthful? Do you look vital with vitality? Are you strategic? And so looks do have a lot, okay? But it's not just looks because somebody can get plastic surgery and people can buy it for maybe five years until then one day their body just, you know, hits the wall because you can't lie, you know, to people with, you know, against mother nature. She's going to basically come, you know, come to surface. So, but anyways, yeah, but, uh, but it's not just looks alone. Okay. It's, it's also what you contribute to the group. It's also what differences you're making in your universe. Okay. And so, um, and so, you know, what people visually gravitate, what people gravitate towards is visual. I mean, it's one thing to say, yes, yeah, yeah, rah, rah, sis, but it's another thing to really gravitate visually to somebody's features you know i mean you've seen some of my old videos where i'm just like all over the place and maybe i look a little cross-eyed because i have you know uh some eye issues from probably little seizures way back when i was younger when i was a kid i don't know have they corrected themselves i don't know maybe some days my husband goes fix your eye jillian because it looks kind of cross-eyed i'm like okay and i'll go fix my eye because i can tell when i'm tired and and I can tell sometimes when my eye goes kind of weird, but, um, but th that's what is first, what people look at is they look at the features, then they look at who they are, what they're posting. Then they look at, um, their politics. They look at also their, their contribution around the Jilly Juice world. So there's a lot of different characteristics that make up Jilly Juice. However, the first and foremost is I want to bring in the youth and vitality. Okay. And right. Beauty in all spectrums, body, mind, and spirit or body and soul, mind, body, and soul, however you want to call it. But, uh, when I'm posting the Jilly Juice people, the picture is what's going to bring people in first. And then that's what you're shooting for. Not saying they're going to use plastic surgery because that's not the point of the juice is do plastic surgery. Hell no. But we want, we want to have a future of people where they're not aging they're not degrading. They don't have imbalances. They're not reproducing like freaking crazy. And if you reproduce, you do it maybe once or twice, if that, and then your body has to bounce back 100% and you raise your kids to where they don't ever have to age and degrade and take on your predispositions because you fix them. And then you make sure you fix your kids' biochemistry so they don't take on your weaknesses that cause you to reproduce in the first place and you make sure your kid has an amazing future that's the kind of future i want is where we guide reproduction carefully so we're not creating children who are the next psychopaths the next sociopaths in the future where we have to create a system around them that's what i want in the future when, am i going to get it anytime soon no we have seven billion people who are completely or uh, maybe seven or six billion nine hundred and ninety nine million <laughs> Maybe, maybe, you know, uh, less than that, but we have at least 6 billion people on this planet that are completely flicking clueless. They like death. They like destruction. They like the wars. They want to play the demonization game. They like, they, they don't mind dying. They don't mind their parents dying. They, they love death because they watch it all the time and they promote it in their family indirectly. They tell their kids, you're going to die someday, so you better get this degree done and get this career done and get this done and make all this money before you die so you can leave a legacy for your kids. And we see that all the time. And I'm trying to say, hey, do we have to promote that to our kids that you're going to die soon or you're going to die someday? No. Why not teach your kids how to regenerate at the micro level so at the macro level they can be the most amazing person with amazing contributions, can be the most amazing leaders and change the freaking course of humanity. But we have set 6 billion people 500 million people that don't freaking get it because they're still into the, the activism or they're completely oblivious, sticking their head in the sand and they're playing the part of, I'm going to go to high school, which, okay, fine. I'm going to go to college. Okay, fine. Get a degree, do this job and then, you know, wait for my retirement and accept death and destruction and cancer and hope for a cure and hope for a vaccine and hope for all of these things and looking for a guru, looking for someone to worship and, 
and hope that that person is going to be there one day. If they're not, then I guess I'll just keep passing on that hope to my kids. So they look for someone that's outside of themselves and never look inward. And that's, you know, and, and, and no, I, I don't want that for my future, which is probably why I don't have kids. Cause I don't want, I never want, I mean, I did at some point want kids, but I think at some point I realized that, you know what? I'm bigger than being a mother at this point. Not saying that anything wrong with motherhood because you guys are some great mothers out there. But I think that I had a different calling. I wanted maybe to what, I wanted people with the, what they had in Silicon Valley. But, um, but that was not my path. Because if it was my path, I would have had 10 kids already. I was having enough sex to have 10 kids. So, but no, but you know, if, I, if that was my path to be a mother, then I would have already been down that path. But that was not my path. So I, I think that there's definitely, you know, hope for humanity and we do have something that we can specifically put out there where it's completely attainable, where you have access to youth vitality and potential indefinite life. And we have the ability to access that. And it's really inexpensive. And you have to understand what it takes, you know, what the microbiome is, what biochemistry is and what, um, what you have to go through to get there and understanding how to characterize symptoms. It's not something that you should be trying to run away from, but you should be embracing and then hopefully never have to deal with it again because you've changed your biochemistry and regenerate cells at the, at the micro level. Okay. So the standard of beauty for Jilly Juice is, is symmetry, proportion, balance, and indefinite youthful vitality. Okay. And that, that's pretty much it. So you know, th those are the standards for the Jilly Juice world. Will we get there? There may be a handful of us that will get there. And then, you know, a lot of people are, have children. They're giving this to their kids. Their kids are going to change our biochemistry. Um, yeah, thanks, Vicky. You feel like your mom to the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and then their kids are going to learn this. Okay. Not everybody talks about them do it with their kids, you know, because they don't want to risk the trolls. And so don't, you know, don't write anything in the group about kids, but if you do, I'm going to use it and I'm going to let it go there because people have got to see that you can give this to your kids and your kids are not going to get hurt from it. But yes, you have to be then open to trolls coming after you. And, you know, they're going to do that no matter what. Okay. So the Jilly Juice girls and boys are the wave of the future. Okay. The wave of the future. Mother nature in the form of a human. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys you guys are amazing and let me tell you you guys are just like me the fact that you understand this everyone that understands this you are no different than me if you had my time if you had my background and it's so interesting they have my background yes you know uh psychotherapist raised by a psychotherapist with a law degree and then my dad's in biotech not that they were bringing home all of these things and teaching us but be simply being around you know that type of thinking the analytical, the legal thinking, and then the manipulative psychotherapist thinking. It, you come by, I mean, I came by it, honestly. You know, I was raising it, so it's just second nature to me. And then my mom, when I was younger, did drop, you know, some of her techniques, not thinking that I was going to remember what she said years and years later. But yeah, when, when she said one day that, yeah, she had to do something to make something happen, and it, it, it created something where the person had to go to jail, you know? And okay, you know, sometimes you got to get people pissed off to make them act. And then it then forces the law or forces you to make a decision. Okay. And so that's why I guess I do things that make people get upset because thanks, John, because, um, because yeah, sometimes you have to get upset. You have to almost hate a person or love a person to move in whatever direction. And then you start weighing out your, your pros and cons. But yes, when you do listen to somebody, like I listened to, I was uh, also um, influenced by Landmark Education as well. So it's not only that my parents' background as far as the foundation, and then Landmark Education gave me the background as far as uh, intention, outcome, specific measurable results, and then, you know, leadership type of stuff and and that, you know, and so I spent a lot of years at Landmark and then I got away from that because it was just kind of the same thing over and over again. And then I started really figuring out who I was in the world. And but then I had my own biochemistry to battle. So anyways, um, you guys, you guys will get it because you have the Jilly Juice. So you can be so much more of a sponge. 
you're not going to have all this calcification in your cells and then your cells are going to pick up things and absorb the information and release the excess and absorb what you need and if there's not going to be a block because when you have calcification because of minerals because you have such imbalances in your biochemistry you know you're, you'll be able to be able to absorb information there is no block to it there's no calcification anywhere you'll absorb what you need and you release the excess and that's the whole point of jelly juice with with data with information with chemistry you'll absorb what you need and you release the excess and it'll make you that much better and that's no different than being exposed to the coronavirus you'll absorb what you need from the coronavirus and release the excess and it won't work against you that's the point of j juice all right have a good day bye